To simulate the radio contact with mission control, they'd need to handle a serious medical problem on board the spacecraft. His pulse is a little quick. He's got about a 90 uh, beats per minute pulse at the moment. I have to get you in that room and I have to actually make you believe that this patient is in trouble and if you don't get on this right this second and do the right treatment, this patient will die. And I have to make you believe that. Dewar's astronaut students get 28 hours training as a crew medical officer. But there's one thing Dewar's Houston lab doesn't simulate, and that's the weightlessness of space. Okay, copy that. The push is on to deliver a Mars spacecraft with artificial gravity. But if the system broke down, medical emergencies would have to be treated in zero gravity. To prepare for that possibility, Dewar takes his dummies to the sky. This is an airplane that goes out at 34,000 feet. And then when you come up and over the top, you're at zero Gs for approximately 30 seconds. They call it the vomit comet because a lot of people get sick to the stomach. Most get used to the jumpy ride, but getting even a simple medical procedure down is tough. In zero gravity, everything's floating off. You have to secure one piece under an arm. You have to secure another piece under another arm. You have to secure your own legs. You have to secure the pack. Otherwise, things are just floating all over the place. It's darn difficult. If I try to press on their chest, I go flying off one direction. The patient goes flying the other direction. NASA isn't the only space agency preparing crews for weightless medical emergencies. The European Space Agency took it a step further, operating on a real patient in zero gravity. The challenge, remove a non-malignant tumor from the forearm of a volunteer. The team has questions. In zero G, will the blood flow differently? Will differences in blood pressure cause problems? Can a surgeon perform a simple operation while being weightless? As the plane made its zero-g parabolic swoops, the team worked in 20-second bursts. Finally, after three hours and 31 weightless sequences, the operation was over. It was a success, although the patient was lifted several centimeters off the operating table during weightlessness. A Mars crew won't have a full medical team. When things get complicated, they'll need to consult with Earth. But with each passing day, radio communications with mission control will take longer and longer. There could very well be situations where we may need a surgeon on Earth able to talk the crew medical officer through performing a procedure. But right now, communications between Earth and a Mars spacecraft is compromised by a time delay of up to 20 minutes. Imagine a surgeon moving an instrument and waiting 20 minutes to see what the response is. A Mars crew will not be able to rely on expert medical advice from Earth. They'll have to handle complex procedures themselves. But the best protection will go way beyond medical training. Medical investigators will screen Mars candidates right down to the cellular level, looking deep into their DNA. One day, Scientists may even go so far as altering their genes to create the perfect Mars explorer. Today, all astronauts are strictly monitored, probed and prodded, screened for every possible disease. I'm sure they do feel like lab rats. Um, but unfortunately, that's, that's what it takes. Every precaution is taken to make sure they don't carry any diseases with them to the launch pad. We limit the exposure of the crew to people so we don't get a cold or the flu or gastroenteritis or whatever, just so that we don't get sick when we're in space. But for a Mars crew, this isn't going to be good enough. Over the course of a two and a half year mission, a life-threatening condition could develop. If someone's uh, brain tumor shows up on the way to Mars, it's not going to be a good thing. So medical screening has to go to a new level for long-duration missions. 
It's called genetic selection. It's a thorough examination of the candidate's DNA. We would use this genetic screening to identify those people who are more susceptible to the radiation. So those tests will help us. They also may help us in the, the department of osteoporosis, or bone wasting, which is a big problem for us for long duration space. And we would screen those people from going on a mission. A spacecraft's limited medical resources could be stretched to the limit during the long-term care for an astronaut suffering radiation sickness. Cutting a vulnerable team member before launch reduces the risk for everyone. We're not only protecting the mission, but we're also protecting the, the astronaut, not only in the short term to complete the mission, but also in the long term to have a long and, and, and normal productive life. If you want a machine to perform better, you have to know it inside out. Dave Williams believes medical science is getting closer to knowing how to get inside an astronaut's genetic code to improve their performance and reliability in space. Williams sees a time when experts in space medicine will operate on a molecular level, altering the genes of astronauts to make them more resistant to the effects of space travel. We might actually have the capability of stimulating a gene to maintain muscle strength, to maintain the fast to slow twitch fiber ratio that we need to be able to prevent muscle wasting from taking place. In the future, it may be possible for astronauts to be genetically doctored to suit the Mars mission. Going to Mars will take a special kind of person to undergo the training and the medical screening to make it. Whatever screening methods they decide to use, space agencies across the world will only select the fittest for the first manned mission to Mars. But the engineers and scientists must also be able to design the hardware that will safeguard the lives of their pioneering crew on the most hazardous journey known to humanity. We don't want to go at the hairy edge of survival. We want to go knowing we can go back the way the first people came here to North America from Western Europe or from Polynesia to Australia. We gotta build a system, and that system has to be reliable. New, more powerful engines will be called on to carry the crew to Mars and back. Getting a manned mission millions of kilometers to Mars is a monumental engineering challenge, and it will be met. But accomplishments measured in thrust and speed mean nothing if the people on board do not survive. The weakest link, as well as the greatest strength of any successful mission to Mars, remains the crew. Everybody's perfect, huh? And keeping them alive is the number one priority. But some of the greatest threats to the mission could come from within the crew.